Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you. And Lord, we come before you humbly and reverently. In the name that is above every name. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of glory. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Lord, I thank you for speaking through these lips of clay unto this people. Thank you, Lord, for speaking through me. Thank you for giving illumination to my mind and direction to my spirit. Thank you, Lord, for using this vessel for your glory. And I thank you, Father, for the words to say unto this people in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. If you would, come with me to 1 John, the epistle of John. 1 John. I want us to look at verse number 1 of chapter 1. The epistle of John. That which was from, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Now I want to talk to you this morning about the joy of the Lord. Amen. 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 God wants you and I walking in joy. Amen. Did you know joy is just as real as this anointing oil. Right. See, a lot of times we think <clears throat> that only real things can be touched. But the most real things that exist are more real than the physical, if I said that correctly. Amen. Amen. God is more real than the earth, and yet the earth is physical. Amen? Amen? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So why, why am I saying this? Because joy is something that is deposited in the Christian. And I'm going to share something to you. Years ago, when I bought my first house at 213 Pine Park Drive, how many knows where Pine Park Drive is at in Pearl, Mississippi? I wish houses was as cheap now as they were then. Amen. Making $50,000. <laughs> well, they go up, don't they? I don't know. They do. Well, I was getting ready for prison ministry. And on the inside in here, I felt like the Lord said right in here, it was like a download. How I many know Jesus is the first one that comes with, up with downloads? Amen. Because what it would take me to tell Jason something that would take about 30 minutes, God can download it to you like that, and you've got everything in your spirit. Amen. Well, I was on the, in the living room studying, and I was reading the book of Galatians about the fruit of the Spirit. One of the fruits of the Spirit, Christian, is joy. Now, that is the fruit of the Christian. The born again, recreated human spirit. Just like... Where did he go? Where did Richard go? There he is. I'm so used to you see. Just like Richard was given his testimony that when he was baptized, it didn't mean anything. 
Before I was saved, I was in the bars and pool halls. I played some of the best pool players in the world. You know that. I've been on TV, Pool and Billiards Magazine, Billiards Digest, and I wanted to be the best nine ball player in the world, but Jesus had different plans, and thank God he did, because I was just thinking the other day, I think if I would have continued in that path, I probably would have been dead. That's right. Somebody said, this is just, might have been last night. Why? Because that wasn't what God called me to do, and his blessings wouldn't have been upon me then. See, you want to find your call, whatever God's called you to do, and get in it. He might have called you to pray for people or be a witness for him. Shit, you know, wherever you go, not everybody's called to stand behind here, but people are called to be his witness, whether it's one-on-one. -on -one. If somebody comes to your house or somebody you know that don't know Jesus, you have something to give them. That's right, amen. Amen. Well, I never had joy in me. Now, if something I had, my happiness was based upon my surroundings. If the money was good, the health was good, or if something was funny, I laughed. But I didn't know what joy was. Now, stay with me, because the Lord shared with me, people of the world don't know what joy is. Amen. They... Their, their, their laughter, their happiness, listen, is based totally on their surroundings. Right. And when the Lord shared that with me, or downloaded to that with me, I thought, wow, I never saw that before. And so something that the Christian has that the unbeliever doesn't have is joy. Now, I can go through hell, so to speak. I mean, the enemy can be coming against me financially, physically, or whatever it may be, and I can still have a smile on my face. I can still be joyous. Why? Because that doesn't affect me. Amen. People of the world have committed suicide because of their surroundings, but our surroundings could be could be hell, so to speak, and you can still have a smile on your face. How is that? Because the Word of God says, "The joy of the Lord is my strength." That's right. Amen. You know, I haven't had any alcohol or anything in over 25 years, not one. Amen. But if somebody did and they asked God to forgive them, God forgives them. Amen. Amen. Right. But I choose to worship God with my body, to present my body a living sacrifice. Amen. I said that to you to say this. There's many people that have come up to me and said, man, I'll take what you got. They might have thought I had a pill. They might have thought I had a drink. They might have thought I smoked something. It wasn't none of that. It was just being high on Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's the best high ever. That is the best high ever. Amen. And when I was in the bars and pool halls, I did take some of that tote that we called it Mary Jane. <laughs> Amen. But I don't do it no more. Don't worry. Amen. And, 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 and I would get laughing. But now I can walk in a constant high. That's right. One, because you're still laughing, Jason. <laughs> but anyway, uh, but see, I had to do something before I knew Jesus to give me that happiness, to give me that laughter. But now I don't have to take a pill, smoke, smoke anything, or drink. Why? Because I'm on high with Jesus. Amen. I have a joy in me, unspeakable, the word of God says, and full of glory. Amen. Amen. And so that's what I'm sharing with you this morning is here's what the Lord won't, here's what the Lord is saying to you this morning. He wants you joyous. He wants, thank you, Lord. He wants you to enjoy this life while you're here. And the enemy wants you miserable. The enemy of your soul wants you looking at finances, looking at health, looking at this, looking at the negative. God says, look at me. He is saying, be joyous this day. Amen. And you can just look to God. You know, it's amazing how many people, did you know some people have lost their joy over one little negative thing and there are so many good things around them? That's right. But the enemy's got them focused on one thing. 
this. And the Lord is saying, look at all the blessings you have. Hallelujah. There's a song that Pharaoh, we need to sing, is, have you ever heard this song? Uh, joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory. Jesse had. Jesse had. <laughs> I saw Jordan back there shaking her head. Yes. Well, because that's what he's given his people. See, the people of God have something that the world doesn't have. But listen, the world can have it. They just have to accept Jesus. Amen. And when Jesus comes into someone, his, he comes into them when well, joy comes in. Amen? Now, I want you to notice that. If you're there at First John, I'm going to read 3 and 4 again. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. These things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Now, have you ever heard of this? Because I've heard it because people said this about me when I left the pool halls. They said, Dennis got religious owners. No, I got saved. Amen. Right. There's a, amen, Jordan. There's a difference between religious and saved. I met religious people that would stole you. I met religious people that will hate you. But being saved, you love your enemies. When I got saved, I loved it. If, 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 if somebody talked bad about me, oh, Lord bless them. Even today, when, when people do me wrong or say things or come against me, Lord bless them. Bless them, Lord. Or someone that has did me wrong in the past. And the devil brings a picture of it to me. I start praying for them people. Why? Because of the love of God that's in me now. Amen. You, I could not do that before I was saved. Before I was saved, I was, I was like, man, I'm not praying for them people. That's right. I shunned them people. But now that I got saved, Jesus, not only did joy come into me, love came into me. And that's why the Bible says in Matthew 5, 44, love your enemies. Amen. You can't love your enemy with this flesh. Your flesh will suck. Yeah. <laughs> you do me wrong. <laughs> but what did Jesus say when he was being crucified? That's right. Amen. What did Stephen do when he was being stoned to death? Lay not this sin to their children. What? Because the, I'm talking about the Christian. When Jesus comes in to someone, their life is changed. He changed me. And I want to share that to you. When you, I'm going to share this with you. When you are in fellowship with the Lord, Listen to me what I'm about to say because I'm going to read a little bit more of this chapter. You will maintain a joy. The moment that you and I sin, now this is the way it is with me, the moment that I sin, the joy is gone. I'm not, I'm not my normal self. But when I confess it and I say, Lord, I ask you to forgive me for what I said earlier, for what I did. Lord, I repent for not obeying you, whatever it might be. I says, Lord, I ask you to forgive me. The moment that I repent, that's when forgive me. The joy of the Lord is restored back to me again. Amen. Now let's go on reading. Look at verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, well, how do I walk in the light, Brother Dennis? By, by the word. The word of God, the Bible says, the entrance of thy words give us light. When you know what to do, what the Bible says, the Bible says thou shalt not steal. So you know not to steal something. 
Just like I said, if I go over to Isaac's house, and I don't know if y'all know this about him, but he's got a lot of money in his room. <laughs> already found out about it. He told me. He said. And so, uh, Mama, did you clean the drawer out? He's bent it out, brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, if I go over to his house, and he's got one of those $100 bills on the floor. And I come out of his drawer somehow. And the thought comes to me, why don't you get that $100 bill? Well, I'm walking in the light. I'm going to say, no, that's stealing. I will let him know that, hey, you dropped some money. Yeah. That's walking in the light. It's walking in the word. Amen. The Bible says, thou shalt not lie. God said that two times. In uh, Proverbs, these six things does the Lord hate, seven of them are abomination, and two of them are lies. So if somebody comes up to me, and uh, I'm going to use my wife as an example. Uh-oh. <laughs> and she comes up to me, and she says, uh, how do I look? Well, I'm not going to tell her a lie. If she's got on something I don't like, I might say, I think this would look good on you. See, I said something without telling a story. If we're going to maintain the joy of the Lord, we got to be right with God. That's right. Amen? Amen. In other words, walk in the Word is walking in the light. Amen, Brian? Misty? God is good. Amen. Yes, He is. Let's go on reading. It's verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. And if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Now, just as I said, if you and I sin, it says if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all Unrighteousness. What's the opposite of unrighteousness? Righteous with God again. That's right. Amen. So the moment if, when you walk with God, when you fellowship with Him through His Word, through prayer, there's a joy, the Bible says, unspeakable and full of glory. That's right. Amen. No matter what life brings your way, you will have a smile. You will be joyous. Why? Because of the life of Christ on the inside. You don't have to pop a pill, drink a drink, or smoke anything. It's because of Jesus living on the inside of you and I. Amen? Amen. Now, I want to share this with you. You know that our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. You know that Jesus said He didn't come to give us religion. Adam messed up in the garden. Jesus came to the earth to reckon. Now, Christianity, let me stop there because I felt in my spirit somebody put a roadblock. Christianity is labeled as a religion of as one of the religions of the world. Because there's many religions in the world. Oh, I heard the, around a number of them one time, and it was in the thousands how many religions in the world. But Jesus said in John 10, 10, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The only way that you can get into heaven is through Jesus Christ. You can belong to that religion, Islam or Hinduism or Buddhism or New Age and all, or humanism or other religions. And there's many more. They do not lead to heaven. God so loved the world. It's God's way and not our way. We got to come to God on His terms. And not man's terms. Amen. Jesus said I've come that you might have life. And have it more abundantly. He came to the earth to die. To reconcile humanity. Back to the father. 
that Adam had before he ate of that fruit. That's right. Hallelujah. That's why the only way to be saved is through Jesus Christ and no other way. Jesus said, no man cometh unto the Father except by me. Jesus said, I am, in, in John 14, 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. Jesus Christ is the only way into the paradise of God. Amen. Jesus said any other way, if anybody tries to come any other way, he said they're a thief and a robber. That's right. Now, with that being said, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. But what will take away our joy, Rhonda, Heather? What will take away the joy of the Lord? Well, I just told you, one of the things is when we sin. It's, it, it zaps it. I'm no longer joyous. Amen? Amen. But I want to share something else with you. And this is what I'm about to share with you. Listen to me. I'm giving you the Bible. I'm not preaching Dennis Phillips. I'm preaching the Word. Amen? Amen. Go with me to Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. You know, I've preached this over the years. And just as Richard was talking earlier... You know, he came to Cornerstone when I was in Beginning, Mississippi, for nine years. And uh, he just didn't feel like that was for him. But I preached it there, and I've had people to come up and tell me, he says, I never heard that before. I was like, you never heard that before? It's in the Bible. Why well, haven't people heard it before? Amen? Amen. You Matthew chapter 18. I want you to look at verse number 21. Now, there's many of us in here saying, I hope if not all, I know there's many. I don't know everyone's heart. You only know your heart and I only know mine. But there have been people, what I'm about to read, listen to me. Well, thank you, Lord. Let me read, read. I was about to say something, but I'm going to redirect my words. Those that are saved, can forfeit their salvation. Amen. Come on. I'm fixing to show it to you right here in the Word. Those that are saved can forfeit their salvation. And we're fixing to read it right here. I want you to look at verse 21. Then came Peter to him and says, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times. Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Seventy times seven? That's 490 times. So if I sin against you, Sheila, or Renee, 400 times in one day, you're to forgive me. Well, I know you would, but I wouldn't sin against you. Boy. But what Jesus is saying, amen? Amen. <laughs> That's right, anyone, as he is saying, anyone. Now, this is the word of God. I'm going to read that again, what Jesus said at the end of verse 22. I See, let me say this, because I, I, the Lord just wanted me to say this right to you right quick. Peter was only willing to forgive someone seven times. He said, Lord, seven times? Because you know the number seven. But Jesus changed Peter... Peter's way of thinking. Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Now listen to what Jesus tells Peter, but not only Peter, he is sharing with us the will of God this morning. Amen? How many of you know the word of God is the will of God? Somebody said, I want to know the will of God. Get into the word. The word is the will, just like your word is your will. Come on. Amen. Verse 23. Jesus is speaking. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven like. Now here's what it's like now. Y'all listen to this. Unto a certain king, 
which would take an account of his servants. And when he had, had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. Look at that. This guy just said he owed 10,000 talents. And his Lord was commanded him, his wife, and children to be sold. And he fell down. He says, Lord, be patient with me, and I will pay thee all. And the Lord, his Lord forgave him. But look what he did. We're not through here yet. Look at verse 28. And the same servant, the one that was just forgiven, went out and found one of his fellow servants which owed him a hundred. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat saying, Pay me what you owe me. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, and I don't want the Lord saying this about me. Then his Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, Thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all, that, all your debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou or you also have had compassion on your fellow servant, even as I have pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. Now look at verse 35. So likewise, this is Jesus speaking, so likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you. If you from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespass, their sin. Now, this is a touchy subject. Because many people that I found out, now if you listen to me this morning, you will walk out of here free and in fellowship with God. Amen. You cannot have fellowship. We, I just read to you from this verse of Scripture with God if you do not forgive. Amen. You can say you are. You can even come to church, sit on a pew, and do all the motions of religion. And yet still walk out of the door not right with the Lord. Why? Because Jesus said, and I'm going to show you some more. I'm going to give you two other scriptures. Jesus said, if you do not forgive, what did he say? Neither will you be forgiven. Now, well, what do I do, Dennis? Because I'm having some hard feelings towards some people that did me wrong, or my son, or grandchildren, or, or robbed from us, or start praying, forgive them, tell the Lord, I forgive them. Now, your flesh doesn't want to forgive. But you, on the inside, inside your flesh, you have to make up your mind, you have to, with your will, and say, Lord, right now, I'll forgive them. And I ask, and if it's, and if you need help, say, Lord, help me. I want to forgive them. The Lord will help you. And I'm going to say this. You have to forgive them or you will not be forgiven. You cannot go, no matter what you've heard, because so many people have heard the opinions of men and women instead of the Bible. See, my opinion is just like yours. Neither one of them is any good. Amen. But the Word of God is truth. Amen. And there are those, and, I, and I'm sad to say this, 
Because I am a preacher. God called me. I didn't call myself. God called me out of the bars and pool halls. But he interrupted my life and he did it in a good thing. And I can tell you, well, I'll tell you this. I was in, I was staying with some people running a bar, running a pool hall, and I was gambling. That's how I made my money. And uh, I was laying down on the on the little recliner one night. And I was living with some people. And I think all I had to drink was two beers. And man, I was like, wow. I, you know how some people can drink six or seven or eight? Not with me. Because see, remember, I'm a gambler. So I had a, I gambled in nine ball. And, uh, and so I had to have a level head. But if I drank two or three beers, man, I was like, whoa. You know? <laughs> well, anyway, I might have drank two beers. And I'm there on a the recliner. And I passed out. And so there was a little boy named Jamie there in the living room, little fella, and there was other uh, kids in there in the living room, and, and so on. And I was there, and all of us, now I was about 17 at the time, and all of a sudden, he told me, he said, you know what you did last night? And I said, no, I don't, what are you talking about? He said, well, he said, you were lying down in that recliner, he said, you got right up out of the crowd. I'm just telling you what he said, and I know he didn't make this up because they weren't Christian people, and I didn't go to church at that time. And so he said, you got up, and you stood up, and you looked, and he showed me what I did. You looked at everyone in the living room. He said, and then you looked at me, and I'm sitting over there looking at you, and you looked at me, and you said real loud, praise the Lord, and you <laughs> fell right back down. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he said. I said, he said, when you said that, you fell right back down in the recliner. You were out. Now, see, I said that to you to say this. I don't have no memory of that. I'll, I believe that was the Lord. Yeah. My spirit on the inside, you all was coming home. And he was, now, this is just me. And I was looking at everyone in there, bidding them farewell. And I said, praise the Lord. And not long after that happened, my mama over here invited me into revival. Oh, was it Sidewell Side Road? Wasn't it? Is I pronouncing that road right? Sidewell Road in Jackson, Mississippi. Not long after that happened, I got saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. Heaven is real. That's right. And I want to say this to you. When you don't forgive, the heavens become as brass. I remember hearing a minister, he went to preach in a church. Now, y'all listen to me carefully. A lady came up to him. She says, I want to ask you something. I want you to answer a question for me. And he says, well, sister, if I can, I will. She said, take my husband's side of the family and my side of the family. She said, my husband's side of the family, if they ever fail to receive a healing, I don't know it. Could you tell me why? He said, well, sister, I wouldn't know why. And then she said, take my mama's side of the family. If we ever received a healing from the Lord, we either uh, have to go to the hospital or die. You know, and God's not against hospitals. He put them there for people. Amen. Amen. He's called doctors. But I'm just... He's sharing something with you, what this uh, I heard this minister say. Well, she said, You take me and mama, uh, we never received the healing from the Lord. And he said this. I heard him talk about it. He said, Now, just of my knowledge of the Bible, I would say there's three main characteristics about your husband's side of the family. He said, They're quick to repent, quick to forgive. And quick to believe. She said, you hit the nail right on the head. He said, no, I didn't, sister. The Bible did. Amen. She said, <clears throat> she said, my husband's side of the family, if they think they wronged you, they would be coming to you saying, forgive me. I'm sorry. I repent. And they would come to the altar the quickest and repent. She said, more than anybody I've ever seen. And they would believe God the quickest. And she said, you take mama, my side of the family, you'll have to come crawling off, 
on, I think I think the words were on 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 all of your fours for them and beg us to forgive you. You know, you have to come crawling to them and beg them to forgive you. Well, you can tell that grieves the heart of God. That's right. They're not forgiving like Jesus said forgive. That grieves the heart of God. Amen. 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 Are you here? Yes. yes. Well, there's so, oh, thank you, Lord. The Lord just reminded me. You remember me tell you about the lady that didn't talk to her brother for 29, 30 years yes. up in New York State? Yes. Um, she needed, she had a rare disease. Uh, at that time, at that time, I, I heard at that time, that, now this is when there were payphone booths. How many remember that? How many don't remember that? <laughs> Amen. A lot of people don't remember this faith on this. You remember when they was a dime? Now I'll be 53 in two months. But they were a dime, then they went up to be a quarter. Huh? Oh, yeah, I saw you had a use. Well, well she, she was in a service and she had a rare disease. And at, at that time, only four or five or six medical science didn't know much about it. Didn't know much about her condition. This was new. They're still learning about it. And I don't know what her condition was. I'm just telling you what I heard. Well, she was in a meeting and she would not forgive her brother. They had a disagreement. Oh, ain't that sad? 29, 30 years ago. I heard 29, then I heard 30. So 29, 30 years ago. Right at 30 years. Ain't that something? That's what the devil wants. Yes, he doesn't. He wants you miserable. You know, just not too long ago, what sad is I was at Chick-fil-A and there were some police officers in there and I was just talking to them. I mean, uh, y'all know I like Chick-fil-A, don't you? <laughs> Their breakfast is good. <laughs> and, and, uh, and I asked, I said, how's everything going this year? You know? Y'all pretty slow this Christmas time? You know, to my amazement, I said, no, this is one of the busiest this Christmas time. Because families can't get along. That's what the enemy wants. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. Here's what the Lord wants me to tell you. It might not be your fault, but forgive anyway. Why? Because you will keep peace. There's been many times it wasn't my fault. I don't have to be right to forgive. Right. Matter of fact, the Lord told me not too long ago, I was in the rental house in Crossgates before we moved over here on 471. Uh, there was this guy in, in, in McGee that, uh, that tried to hurt me in ministry. And it ain't what you do to people, it's what you don't do sometimes. Come on. You know, some people's not ready for some things. And, uh, well, anyway, he tried to hurt me in ministry. And the Lord impressed upon me. I woke up one morning and the Lord branded him on me. I just had the sense call him. And I said, okay, Lord, you say to I will. You're my Lord. So I called him, talked to him. The first thing he said, he said, did the Lord tell you something about me? <laughs> <laughs> and so I started talking to him. And, and I said, hey, man, what was this between you and I? I, you, I felt like you, there was something there. And he told me. And I said, brother, I didn't mean or something. If I said that, I'll repent before you. But I didn't mean any of that. Uh, I didn't know I said that. You know, because sometimes I say things out of this mouth that come out wrong. Am I, Linda's raising, am I the only one? No. No. Well, see, that's where love comes in. Right. And listen, I've been around pastors that said something derogatory about where I lived at one time and this and that. But I knew they didn't mean it. Don't take everything to heart. You know why I believe the Lord called me, told me to call him where he could get things right with the Lord. He needed to make that right or he wasn't going to make heaven. You got to be careful how you treat people, especially God's people. Amen. You remember Paul in the ninth chapter on the road to Damascus to go and put people in jail and prison that call upon the name of Jesus? That great light shone from heaven and blinded his name was Saul, but later Paul said, Who art thou, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus 
whom thou persecutest. When you persecute one of God's people, you're persecuting him, and he don't like that. Amen. Amen. We have to be careful there. You remember me sharing with you about Brother Irwin. He was talking, him and a pastor was talking about how come another pastor did something. Now, y'all listen. I heard him talk about this right from him. He said, he said, he was saying something about another pastor. You know, what maybe what how the he said this. I'll go ahead and tell you. He said, How come him to do that? That was stupid. Him and another pastor talking about another pastor. Well, he went to bed that night and he pulled the little string, he pulled the light, and all of a sudden his room lit up brighter than the light. And the Lord spoke to him in that supernatural. The light, uh, he cut the light out, and all of a sudden his room filled with light. And the Lord said, didn't you say this about brother so-and-so? And he said, yes, Lord, I said it. And the Lord spoke to him and says, whether he falls or stands, he falls and stands with me. And the light went out. So we have to remember, this mouth of ours, it can, it can put you in your grave quicker. I, I can tell you, I, I, that ain't my message. I can stop right here and tell you some people that said things, death came or sick or disease came upon them. But that's not my message. My message is to forgive. Forgive. What does it say in 1 Peter 4 8? Love covers a little sin. A multitude of sin. No matter how I sin against you, you are required, you are commanded to forgive me. And if you don't forgive me, you are forfeiting the salvation of heaven. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. Here's what the Lord just gave me right here. There's many people who thought they were going to heaven and ended up in a devil's hell. That's right. That's right. Amen. Just coming to church don't save no one. I'm coming to church and I'm going to sit right here and listen to this preacher. And, and you won't forgive and you act like the devil, talk like the devil, and you do people wrong and you hurt people and you plot against people. Not so. Those will never see heaven unless they say, Jesus, forgive me. I repent for acting that way toward these people and I ask you to forgive me. He will forgive them then he expects you to do better. That's right. Amen. He expects you to forgive. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus said in verse 35, so likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if you from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespass. Jesus said, my fathers will do the same thing. And the Lord just reminded me, get back to the woman that had the rare disease. I left you hanging, didn't I? <laughs> well, she had a rare disease. We got to talking about telephone booths. And uh, she had a rare disease, and she was in a meeting like this. And she needed healing. It was incurable. Medical science don't know too much about it. And so she thought, before I have that man of God to pray for me, I need to call up to New York State and ask my brother to forgive me. Well, she gets into the payphone booth. She walks into the payphone booth, calls up to New York State, gets on the phone with her brother, <coughs> and she says, they, they start talking, they reconcile, they forgive one another. She, she, come, she comes out of that payphone booth. The disease never manifested again. She didn't need anyone to pray for it. It just left. Amen. Don't you think God knows what he's talking about when he says forgive? Yes. Now, Essie just got up and walked out of here. She followed me here from McGee. Jason, Jada, and Jordan. And Essie did a search. If she was in here, I would, she would confirm it. On unforgiveness, what it opens the door to. You ought to Google what unforgiveness does. It opens the door for ugly things to come in. But I'll tell you this, it opens the door for Satan to come in. And we want to close that door. Well, someone says, Brother Dennis, how do I forgive when somebody's doing their own? Forgive them. It's just like this one lady came up. And uh, she came up to the pastor, and he, uh, he was going, I believe at that time, on a convention. And she started counting one, two, three, four. She, he, thought he, he thought she was going to name days, but she named years. 
And I guess the way that he looked at her, she says, now don't misunderstand me. I've forgiven her, but I never will forget what that old devil did to me. Well, no, if you forgive with them, you won't keep bringing it up. You keep bringing it up, you haven't forgiven them. If you keep having to tell people what they did to you, you still got the problem. The problem's still with you. And let me share this. If Isaac has done something to me or said something to me or hurt me and I don't forgive him, I don't hurt him, I hurt me. You need to know that. Unforgiveness, you're not hurt. You know, there's people that don't like me or, 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 or won't forgive me for something they say I said or did. They not hurt me. They hurt themselves and God. Amen. Because I'm the same as I always am. With a little skip. Amen. And a smile and a laughter. Amen. Amen. I've had people to come against me, try to destroy me in ministry. And if they was to come through this door right here, I'd shake their hands or hug their neck and pray for them and call their names out to God. Why? Because I don't want the flesh to get ahead of me. Amen. And one way that you stay in the love of God is when people done you wrong, call their names when the enemy comes to your mind, your thought process, and tell you what they said and remind you of what all they did. Start praying for them earnestly and the devil will quit. And then you can love them that way. Amen? Amen. Amen. Jesus said, love your enemies. That's right. Amen. Amen. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. He said, love, bless, do good and pray. And a lot of times we do the opposite and we want a blessing from God. God, I need a blessing. God is looking at us saying, now you need to get things right first. That's right. Amen. How many in here understand? Amen. You have to forgive. And when you forgive, you're going to maintain this joy. You're going to, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes, Lord. In other words, that joy in you bubbling up. Oh, thank you, Lord. Here's what the Lord just gave me. It says in Proverbs, a merry heart. See, a merry heart does good like a medicine. Joyous. So when you are joyous, when you are merry, it's for your benefit. Right. It's for your benefit. When you forgive and you're merry and joyous, it's for you. Right. So I want to say this. People's done it wrong. Yeah. People's hurt you. Whether you, your children, your grandchildren, but the devil's going to see to it. He's going to see, he's going to try to get to you somewhere, somehow. That's right. But the Bible says we need to strengthen those things that remain. That's right, amen. Amen. You might can meet the Lord right now is probably bringing to your mind someone that you have not forgiven. To your mind, he's bringing someone to you that you need to let it go. Because that's been a hindrance to you. And to your fellowship and relationship with God. You've got to let it go. God doesn't want none of us bound. He wants us free in the spirit. Amen. He wants you free physically. He wants you free in the spirit. When we're carrying unforgiveness and all animosity and hatred. Well then that binds us on the inside. And God is saying let it go and be free on the inside. It doesn't affect them. It affects you. And I'm going to say this to you. When you don't forgive someone, they control you to a certain extent. If you see them, you go the other way. Now, if I see someone's done me wrong, I'm going to them. Because I want the devil to know that I forgive them. But there be people, they see someone, oh, they're coming this way. Don't do that. Don't do that. Go to them. Show God you forgive him. Amen. Right. And if it's hard for you to do it, pray about it. That's right. Yes. At least you can say, Lord, I'm praying about it. Amen. Instead of you standing before the Lord and the Lord said, you didn't even ask for my help in this situation. You chose not to forgive. And I'm going to say this, and I say this with humbleness and love. If you don't forgive, you forfeit the glories of heaven. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. You know, it's just like not too long ago, I got to say this, and this is the last thing, and I'll end it right here, sir. Uh, not too long ago, my wife, she said something that offended me. And you know what it says in 1 Peter 3, 7, that husbands and wives are to get along, that their prayers, just like this in 1 Peter 3, 7, I believe that's the chapter of verse, that your prayers be not hindered. And so she said something that offended me, and I started taking offense against it. See, every, even preachers has got to do the word. Yeah. It ain't just for the congregation, it's for everyone. Well, I told her how she offended me. I'm getting gas at the Exxon over there on uh, Lakeland Drive and uh, Airport Road. Well, which is Liberty, Liberty Road and Lakeland Drive. And I'm there at that Exxon, and all of the stars sudden, I haven't had them since, and that's been probably three months ago, four months ago. I'd have to look and see, probably about three months ago or four months ago. I started having some symptoms in my in inside my body that I've never had before. And here's what I thought. I thought I just opened the door for the devil through my animosity and through my unforgiveness. I asked my, my wife, I said, forgive me for having some unforgiveness towards you. And uh, and then I repented before God. I said, God, forgive me for having some unforgiveness, some animosity toward my wife, by what she said. I repent. And I meant it. And I asked her to forgive me. And I, I ain't had them, them symptoms went away and I ain't had them since. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me say this. How do I know it was because of that? Because when she was sitting in the trunk beside me, we were going to get her mother's car at, off Lakeland Drive one night. And as she was sitting in the trunk beside me, and I was talking, and, and, and beside me, and I was letting her know that I didn't like what she said, and I was holding animosity. Instead of forgiving her, when she was beside me talking about it, I started having those symptoms on the inside of me, and I said, and I thought to myself, what's this? I said, I'm going to open the door for the devil. And when I asked her to forgive me, and I forgave her, she forgave me, and I asked God to forgive me, they left, they haven't been back. Be careful, because you don't affect that other person. You affect you and your relationship with Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's 10 after, but the Lord gave me one more verse just then to give you. Can I do that? Yeah. Yeah. One verse. I want to obey God. It's Mark 11, 24. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Mark 11, 24. I'm going to read to you right quick. Jesus is speaking. He said, Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Now he's talking about prayer. Jesus wants to answer your prayers. He said, when you pray, believe that you receive it. No words, believe you got it first. And he said, you'll have it. Right? Amen. Now, his very next breath, his very next sentence, look at verse 25. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have fault against any, that's anyone, that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. He started out talking about prayer. Receiving from Him. And then He knew there's a hindrance to prayer. There's something that will block your prayer life. And Jesus had to tell them, when you stand praying, forgive because if you and I don't forgive, your prayers will not reach above the ceiling and the heavens will become as brass. But when you choose to forgive, you're being like God. And God is saying, now the blessings are available to you. Let's all say it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I helped you or not. Yes. Did I help you this morning? Yes. Did the word of God help you this morning? Yes. Yes. I'm going to say this. 
You can't afford not to forgive. Because it comes with a heavy price, don't it? I forgive. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And I want everyone to say this after me. Now, I want you to mean it from your heart. If you don't mean it from your heart, somebody says, Brother Dennis, how can I tell if it's coming from my heart? Well, when you tell your spouse, your husband, or your wife that you love them, is it coming from your heart or your head? Your heart. Say this to the Lord from your heart. Let everyone close your eyes and say this to the Lord. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus forgive me. Forgive me. For all that I've said, for all that I've, said, for all that I've done, for all that, I've done that, is sinful, that is sinful, that is wrong, that is, wrong, that is, wicked. That is wicked. I call upon you, I call upon you and, I you and I ask you to forgive me and cleanse me, and cleanse me by, your blood. by your blood. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus forgive, me forgive me for not forgiving others. I forgive them right now. I love them. I forgive them. I pray for them. Draw them unto you by your spirit. Lord, forgive me for not wanting to forgive. I forgive freely this day. In the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus. I believe. You are the Christ. The Son of the living God. And I confess you. With my mouth. As my Lord. And my Savior. Thank you Jesus. For forgiving me. For my sins. My wickedness, my wrongdoings, and I forgive others as I have been freely forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't you feel clean now? Don't you, you feel clean? You're shaking your head because he heard that prayer. You meant it? Well, I just want you to know. We're having a baptism service tonight. We got a number of people. Come, you wouldn't believe how fun this is. 